How's it going guys? In this video I wanted to answer a question that someone asked in the comments section of a previous video that I did and that question was on the timers uh, within CCT. Uh, in particular the question was about why there is so much of a delay in a cooling valve opening. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the reasons why we see things acting as slowly as what they do, uh, you know, within some of the systems that we have. The thing about CCT that is uh, generally used for the newer controllers uh, is that it is a state-based program. And what I mean by that, as you'll see once we get into there, is each of the systems will have different modes. If you have, uh, for example, like the thermostat in your house, uh, you will have a switch on it generally like for heating or for cooling and that sort of thing. And you actually have to manually switch the system from one or the other. Inside CCT, the programming is what actually does the switch. And what I'm actually going to do, we're actually going to look at a cooling output since uh, this is what we have had the question on. And now you guys are going to notice that the screen here, there are some uh, different colors as far as some of these points and if you do not know what that is if you go to a particular output and you want to know some of the things that are influencing the function of that output you can simply right click that and select show involvement and then just uh, to show you exactly what I've done I'm going to turn that back off for that this is generally what you would see when you come into your program and since I want to look at a cooling output, instead of simply having to scroll through here and try to figure out exactly what is influencing this output, I'm simply going to right click that output and select show involvement. And that is going to then highlight each of the logic blocks that are going to influence that particular output. Now we can see here that the first one is going to be the proportional valve cooling control. And since the question was about uh, the way that uh, that valve being so slow, this is what we're going to be looking at. Now if uh, you're not real familiar with navigating through CCT, I've got an entire video series where I talk about some of the basics of CCT. So go back and check those out and it'll give you just a little bit better understanding about how to read through the way uh, you're seeing things here on the screen. Now what I'm going to do here, since this is a program block that I'm going to look at, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to right click. I'm going to select View Logic. This is going to tell us a little bit about what we need. And you can see all of our connection points here and these are all playing into the programming. It may not look like it now, but what we're looking at now is that mode selector. There are several things that are going to play into this. This is the different modes of this particular logic block. Just imagine that this is a whole bunch of switches on a thermostat in your house and you've got to put it into the right one for exactly what you're wanting the system to do. That's what you're currently seeing displayed here. The way that we can tell which of these modes that we are looking at is by the color of this uh, particular one that's, that is uh, right now lit up blue. If we were actually commissioned in, it would actually be lit, lit up green. If I wanted to see what's in some of these others, I can simply click on one of them and you will see that uh, the off is now highlighted and then it will show me the controls uh, logic, the control logic for that particular section of the block. And then I can go right on down the line. Uh, you're going to notice on some of those there's very little bit, uh, there's very little change. But as I continue to click, uh, I can see that different things are happening. 
and you know right here we have our PID loop for temperature control and then of course we have H control which is humidity control and so on so that's how you can tell exactly what's going on in each of these particular modes now the question was why does how does this play into the delay of a cooling valve well first of all there's a few things that play into it all right we are seeing here during the command hierarchy that we have here we're seeing the switch that's going to tell the logic block which section of it needs to be active if uh, we do not have the correct section of the logic block active there then we're not going to be doing what we need to do what we want it to do and there's a few things that play into this if i bring up my connection panel down here you're going to see that there's a lot of things that play into this the mode right here that you can see which is going to be this particular input right here that plays into this command hierarchy is only one of a few things that play into this. Now let me go back and look in this screen here and you're going to see that we have uh, a few other things playing into our logic block. Of course we have our outside air temperatures, our cold deck discharge temperature set point. All of these values are plugged into the logic block that we're seeing here. And, you know, I go back in here and I view the logic and we can see some of those points here. The, the, those that we saw just a moment ago are linked somewhere in here. And all of those are going to affect the overall function of this logic block. Now, the first thing the system has to do is it has to determine what mode that it needs to be in. If it's going to be controlling for temperature, if it's going to be controlling for humidity and that sort of thing. And some of the things that's going to play into that, of course, is going to be outside air temperature. Uh, you know, if you have a lockout on it, you know, if we're not going to run a chill water system, there's no need to run a, uh, a cooling valve you know if uh, for example we generally will use a 55 degree outside air switch over temp from uh, the time that we will use outside air to cool a building uh, anything above that that's when we're going to bring the chilled water valve into play and the system is going to look at all of that now before it even begins to open that valve this logic block has to be in the correct mode once we have gone through some of the set point determinations and once the logic has gone through uh, some of the comparisons and things like that uh, to switch the block you know pulling in all of these other values pulling in all of these other points right here in our, co our cold deck temperature all of these other values once they are pulled into this uh, and the system decides, okay, you know, it's time to go into whatever mode that I need to be in. And so it's going to go into whatever mode it thinks that it needs to be in. And when you turn that on, these PID loops do not immediately wake up. So there's going to be a little bit of a delay while the system figures out exactly what mode that it needs to be in. And once it does figure out the mode that it wants to be in, then it's you know once it switches it into that mode the pit loop has got to wake up basically i mean i've seen some of these things especially in systems that have laid dormant uh, for a good part of a season uh, you know for example we've got some steam systems that when we first bring the steam on it takes those things 10 to 15 minutes before it's even going to move that steam valve on its own. You know, that's just the way that the programming is set up. And, you know, there are ways around that. I have written custom logic blocks that will eliminate a lot of the unnecessary processes, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, it pushes the system to work a little bit faster. You know, the, the, generally when you set an air handler or something up like this, it is intended for uh, a field technician basically just to select the type of system and all that. If any of you guys out there have uh, gone in and wrote a programming for an, a unit, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And there's really a lot of unnecessary things built into some of these default setups. And there's just no other way to put it. 
and you can go in and speed up the process of your system by writing the custom blocks and cutting out a lot of the stuff that's really unnecessary. In fact, this particular system, we do not have humidity control on it. Now, even though there is a block for it and that sort of thing, we do not have humidity control on this particular system. And that's another thing that can add a little bit of a delay. You know, if it goes to a process that is not even used, uh, that just comes in as a default selection tree, you know, as you're going through the selection tree, uh, you know, that's another thing that's gonna play into your delay also. Uh, so there's several things that will affect the way your system functions and, and as far as the valves and stuff, as far as how fast they're going to react. Uh, and you can also see uh, in some systems, this one doesn't have it, but in some systems there will be actually uh, uh, like a rate limiter, like if you do not want a value to change but so many times per minute or whatever, you can actually put that into some of these logic blocks kind of as a buffer uh, instead of, uh, for example, a static uh, pressure control system where you're ramping up a VFD, you may not need that changing uh, very rapidly. You know, uh, you know, with the way that the VAVs affect the system and things like that as they open up, there's a lot of things that can play into it, a lot of things that you can do to kind of help filter out some of the noise, I guess you could say, that can also cause a delay. But in general, uh, to the guy that asked the question, I don't remember your name off the top of my head, sorry about that. But in general, what it may be is it's taking the system a little bit of time to decide what mode that it wants to be in. And then once the system has decided, then the PID loop has got to wake up and that sort of thing. And you can kind of get in there and play around with some of the numbers on the PID loops. Uh, especially if it's set for automatic tuning, you may need to retune your system. Sometimes that can help. And a little trick that does help on some of these is simply to turn off the auto tuning. This one currently has uh, the manual tuning set to false. You can uh, get, let these run in auto tuning to where you get some uh, a very stable system and then simply switch the tuning to manual and that way it kind of locks those numbers in and you don't have to worry about them uh, uh, changing on their own. It's, you know, it's going to react very similar uh, each time. There's not going to be a lot of difference in the way that the system reacts. But anyways, I just wanted to throw this out there to you. I uh, hope this helps. It's really hard to know exactly what the particular cause could be. Uh, you know, there are ways of timing outputs and that sort of thing, but there's, there's just, like I said, a lot of things that play into it. But anyways, I hope it helps. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'd appreciate it if you would check out the links down in the description. Be sure to leave any questions that you have down in the comments below. Check out the rest of the videos on the channel, and we will see you next time.